sessions and uh, mine will be a bit technical and will be a, a repetition of some others. So uh, repeating is a, a part of learning process, right? So uh, let's crack on. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Ismail Tunja. Uh, I've been uh, working with uh, Dynamics uh, business applications uh, since 2007. It's been almost 14 years. And uh, I started in a, uh, at a gold partner in Turkey uh, as a software developer. Uh, after a few years, uh, I found that uh, a Dynamics partner company with a friend of mine in Turkey. Uh, we have done uh, several projects together and I left him over. After that, I transferred to a, a regional holding company as a business technologies team lead. Uh, until then, I was uh, uh, working on Dynamics uh, AX. Uh, as I said, I started with Dynamics AX version 3, uh, accepted then. And uh, after uh, transferring to uh, a holding company, I started to uh, involved in all business applications, uh, including uh, HR, uh, CRM, uh, data integrations, uh, data management, uh, and reporting. So uh, again, I led a team and we implemented a lot of projects over there. And uh, two years ago, I moved, to, I moved into the UK uh, and I found my own company. Uh, which is Abstack Limited, and now I'm doing technical uh, working as a technical consultant uh, of my company. And uh, most of you know, uh, if uh, you have been with this product uh, like me for a long time, uh, in all good days we were uh, developing a lot of customizations, vertical solutions for customizations. But lately, this product uh, became much more mature, and uh, we have uh, lots of modules right now ready to use. So mostly we are working on integrations and uh, reporting reporting uh, requirements. And this uh, integration between Dynamics HR, Dynamics 365 HR, and uh, Dynamics 365 uh, uh, FNS SCM, uh, come to me several times, and uh, we extended a bit more, so uh, we experienced a bit uh, a more uh, uh, stuff in here. So I just want to share my experience in this. Uh, this presentation will be a bit technical, so uh, I hope you can get uh, it from mine uh, as well as the others. Start uh, with the agenda. Uh, there will be five parts. The first part will be fundamentals. Uh, second part will be settings. Third part will be mapping. Uh, fourth part will be monitoring. And uh, until this part uh, will be mostly standard uh, usage. So uh, if you already familiar with the uh, environment, familiar with the uh, integration, uh, you may know most of the, this part. And the second part, I will mention about some extras uh, which we uh, have done uh, as extension in these environments, and uh, we uh, find resolutions for some problems. So uh, let's start with uh, environments. Uh, in a lot of session you already you have already seen the environments, but uh, when I speak with the uh, people in the Dynamics uh, community, most of them uh, didn't involve with these uh, with, with these uh, products, so they don't know the uh, environments. Uh, so I, I just want to uh, present the environments at first. So. Uh, at this point, I just want to uh, of this trial page, uh, which 
Microsoft provides a trial uh, environments for you. So if you want to uh, dig in more and if you want to learn more from the uh, uh, environments, you can create yours uh, in this, uh, starting with this page, which is trials.dynamics.com. You can create your own uh, CRM environment, including uh, uh, sales, custom service, field service, project service automation. You can uh, create your own trial environment for finance and operations, uh, business central as well, and human resources as well. Uh, uh, the second thing is uh, Dynamics 365 HR is out of box environment. So as a technical stuff, we don't have uh, permission to uh, add customizations. We uh, the uh, main screen is uh, very similar to uh, FNO, uh, and that they actually the infrastructure is uh, almost same with FNO, uh, but still we are not able to add any customizations here. Uh, we can. Uh, simply use uh, data entities uh, like just in the FNO uh, and we can uh, do some data manipulations. Uh, in out of box, uh, this Dataverse environment comes with uh, HR setup uh, as default and this uh, common data services integration uh, comes as default. So uh, at first, uh, you can find which environment should you be working uh, for in the Dataverse. Uh, so uh, you can find this information in the About menu uh, on the top right. So that, this is the first step. Uh, uh, of course, uh, for this integration, you need a finance and operations environment. Uh, at this point, if you just want to try, uh, unfortunately, trial FNO uh, doesn't let you to use uh, data entities, so you need a, a virtual machine or a sandbox environment to uh, test this. But if you are already working with customer uh, environment uh, with an organization, you would have an uh, FNO environment ready to use, so you can use that one. Uh, and third one is, uh, this is the tricky part for most of the FNO developers. Uh, if you only work with AX, uh, you, uh, nobody expects you to be familiar with uh, CRM infrastructure, but as you know, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, evolved dynamic CRM infrastructure to a dataverse, and uh, right now we are using it a uh, uh, central uh, environment for most of our uh, processes. All these uh, uh, integrations, uh, power automate flows, and uh, uh, model driven applications. Uh, are built on this structure. So you need to have access to this uh, Power Platform and you can go to Power Platform Admin Center uh, with the address of admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. Uh, you will be able to see uh, the environments uh, you have access in the list. Uh, there are several security rules for this, uh, but just if you don't see uh, any of them, uh, ask your system administrators to add you uh, in the environment uh, as a uh, admin or CDS contributor or uh, the other roles similar to this. So uh, with this, uh, in this address, you can see the environments and uh, you can uh, set up some other uh, functions like integration, but we'll come to that later. And finally, uh, to update your uh, environment, 
you have to have access in Power Apps, which uh, you can go to address again, make.powerapps.com. And uh, uh, you can see uh, which environment you are working on the right top. Uh, and you can select the environment. This is important part because you, you may not have the uh, solution in other environments and you uh, don't want to uh, harm other environments. Now, this will be the same address which we use, which uh, you see in the uh, Dynamics HR about screen. This will be the name of the environment and this will be the organization uh, which is a fundamental uh, structure in uh, Dataverse environment. Uh, and the last one, uh, if you need to update any data in uh, Dataverse, uh, then uh, you need to have access to flows. Uh, alternatively, uh, you may uh, do this in uh, other platform with Logic Apps. This is uh, up to your uh, company strategy. If uh, you are using simple uh, updates and uh, uh, you are just managing the flows, that's all. But if you have too many uh, flows and if you need to uh, manage uh, continuous development, then using uh, other uh, logic apps is better. Basically, they have the same functionalities uh, when it comes to update all those uh, dataverse entities, uh, but uh, they have uh, different uh, approaches and uh, they, uh, other logic apps are much more uh, corporate, uh, much more uh, appropriate for corporate uh, requirements. Uh, okay. And uh, before doing uh, integration, uh, we should start with settings. And uh, there are several steps for this. Uh, if you're just doing this first time, you may have some uh, issues. So you need to check these steps at first. Uh, if this is a fresh environment uh, you're using, uh, when you uh, enter the uh, data management workspace, uh, system understands this uh, this is the first time and uh, it gives uh, a message uh, like this in the screen and it starts to refresh the data entity if you have any doubts if uh, you uh, uh, you're not sure if ent entities uh, are, are refreshed in the system uh, just go to the uh, system administration and uh, uh, go to the data management and uh, configure for in the framework parameters, entity settings, click on the refresh entity list and refresh your entities. This is crucial because uh, the data integrator uh, gets the list uh, gets the list of entities from here and it is same with FNO. Uh, you have to refresh entities. When you click this button, it takes several minutes uh, in some cases. And uh, if you go back to data entities, you will have the uh, message on top, uh, which uh, either uh, system is refreshing entities or it's completed. So start your integration after you completed this uh, ref uh, refreshing entity step. Second part for uh, Dynamics HR is enabling CDS. Uh, for this, you have to go to system administration, uh, links, and data configuration. This has been told in uh, many uh, sessions uh, today, uh, but 
and that, that is basically the place where you activate the CDS. Uh, just enabling this enable dataverse integration uh, is uh, enough. Uh, after that, uh, system will uh, trigger jobs and uh, start uh, data integration between uh, Dynamics 365 HR and Dataverse. Uh, right now, as you uh, understand, uh, we have uh, three systems so far. Uh, we are not uh, doing integration directly between uh, Dynamics 365 HR and Dynamics 365 FNO. Uh, we are at first doing integration between Dynamics uh, 365 HR and Dataverse. And this is, the, the, uh, please keep in your mind, uh, this is two-way integration. So if you update any record in Dynamics 365 HR, it will update Dynamics uh, uh, Dataverse. And if you update any record in Dataverse, it will update HR. This is, because this is two-way uh, integration, uh, not all uh, data entities included in this integration. Uh, you can uh, click on this look up button and see which data entities included. And if you want to uh, synchronize immediately, you can click on sync, sync now button and uh, uh, start synchronization. The third point is, uh, in some cases I've seen that the, uh, the bad jobs uh, that batch jobs uh, weren't working. So just go to batch jobs. Then filter common data service batch jobs. And check if these are in waiting state, in working state or not. In some cases, I've seen these uh, uh, cancel uh, result uh, status. So you have to run these bad jobs if they are not already run. Sorry. Uh, again, you have to refresh uh, data entities in uh, Dynamics. FNO, uh, we have similar menu, uh, menu links. Uh, basically, you have to go uh, data management workspace. Now you can find it in the tiles in the uh, home screen and go to the framework parameters, entity settings, and refresh the entity list. Uh, again, uh, when you click the, uh, click uh, on this button, it will start the uh, uh, refresh data entities and it will take some time. So start uh, doing integration uh, steps after this completes. And uh, this is uh, the one for the people uh, who aren't living in the US. Uh, or let's say uh, who aren't using date format as month, date, year. In the UK and also in most of the Europe countries, uh, we are using date, month, year seconds in dates. And uh, data management framework is using uh, CSV files uh, as intermediate files. And at this point, uh, you need to configure this CSV Unicode option and local setting. This is very crucial because uh, let's say your, uh, your, your data is uh, 10th of January. Uh, if you don't uh, update the setting, if you leave uh, this as it is, then uh, uh, it is as default in uh, US, which is uh, states local. So uh, it will uh, import the data uh, to the uh, October 1st. Now, this is very crucial, uh, especially in the finance operations side. Uh, but I, I recommend you to do this uh, same setup in uh, Dynamics 365 HR as well, because they're using the same structure. 
then uh, to do this uh, integration, uh, we need connections. Uh, so the uh, so ways to create connections, and uh, this is already mentioned in other sh sessions. Uh, but basically, you have to go to your environment in uh, Power Apps site, go to uh, data, and click on connections. This will bring you the uh, existing connections. And uh, I think uh, Julia uh, explained this in uh, her session. Uh, you need to create a, a connection with a user. Uh, if you use yourself, uh, you use your own uh, user, uh, it may cause problems when implementing to the live environment. So be careful and uh, use uh, a service one of service account uh, instead of using uh, your own account. But testing purposes, I'm still using my account, uh, which is admin at aptst uh, uh, on Microsoft.com. Basically, uh, you click on the uh, new connection button on top. There are a lot of uh, connectors in the list. Uh, you may not find here, so let's click and click on the search as a common data source. Uh, I don't know when Microsoft will convert this naming to the database connectors, but it is still common data source. So you need to get, uh, get on with this. Uh, mixed usage of uh, database, common data source, uh, and same as Flow, Power Automate, uh, and other stuff. So there are two connectors here. One is current environment, the other one is uh, uh, common data service. Uh, I prefer to use common data service first one, and then uh, you will be able to select the environment, and that the second one will update the current environment. And to create a finance and operations connector, basically put in Dynamics and select Dynamics 365 for FinOps and another naming, which is now uh, FNSCM. And uh, just select the uh, connector and uh, go on with create button. This will create connectors, connections in your list, and uh, you will use these connections in uh, data integration. Uh, And the last step is creating a connection set. And uh, this can be done in uh, Power Platform Admin Center. Uh, if you're not familiar with these environments, uh, you may need some time to get on with the screens. But uh, I believe in future Microsoft will combine all these sites and uh, they all can be done in one site. Right now, uh, they are still improving the user interface, the functions uh, in uh, this Power Platform uh, page and Power Apps page. Actually, uh, in the end, I'll show you a trick in uh, Standard Dynamics um, uh, administration settings, which you are not able to do this in Power Apps screens. Let's go to connections. Here, are the uh, in the data integration page, You will be seeing that the integrations uh, and the uh, statistics uh, uh, so far, and you will be uh, seeing the uh, project connection sets and templates in the list. Before starting the uh, integration project, better to have connection sets, uh, or you can prefer to create a connection set. Uh, when you uh, when you are doing the integration, uh, that's an option which I'll show you later. Uh, basically, you need to click on new connection set and give a name. Uh, 
Uh, I prefer to put in a uh, uh, long name uh, if I need to uh, check the uh, configuration later. And we have uh, option to export these uh, settings uh, into uh, JSON files, so it is uh, easy to find them later. So uh, always, uh, I recommend you to uh, use uh, a clean naming always. So set, let's say Power Summit. And for the first F section, you have to select CDS because our source will be uh, Dataverse. And when you select it, uh, you will be able to select the environment. Uh, and you have to be careful with this too. And uh, in the second app connection, uh, you have to select this uh, connector uh, for Dynamics uh, 365 Finance and Operations. Uh, in this case, uh, these are basically the same. Uh, you can select either of them and the environment. After you select the environment, it will bring the uh, legal entities and organizations. Uh, this uh, organization is a, a fundamental uh, part of uh, Dataverse. And uh, right now, uh, to my knowledge, uh, we are able to do integrations for just one uh, legal entity with Dynamics 265 FNO. And here uh, you can select a level entity, which is USMF for our case. Okay, and save. After you save, you'll see uh, this uh, connection set in the connection sets list. And if you click on it, you'll see the detail, uh, source environment and target environment. Uh, you can do the reverse for uh, reverse integrations. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, but today I want to show you the out of box mapping. So I will use this one uh, from uh, CDS to from Dataverse to uh, uh, FNM. Okay, uh, now connection set is ready. Now let's start for mapping. Uh, Microsoft provides uh, standard mapping for us. It is really easy to uh, implement. Uh, basically, uh, open the uh, Power Platform at the center, uh, click on new project on top, Give a name. As you see, I'm still trying to get on with this name. <laughs> uh, uh, you can uh, create a new connection set, as I said before. Here, uh, if you uh, didn't. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, you can select the connection set which, uh, which uh, you have created before. And now uh, the tricky part, choose a template. We have uh, templates uh, from Microsoft, uh, which uh, does the mapping itself. Uh, and there are two versions for us, and we'll select the latest one. Uh, at this point, uh, Microsoft has a docs page which explains this uh, mapping. Yes, this one. Uh, if you search uh, in the Microsoft docs site, which is your closest friend if you are working in Dynamics, community, uh, Dy Dynamics uh, Solutions, uh, it is explaining uh, the main mapping and uh, the uh, entities which are included in this mapping. So you can check if uh, the fields uh, are already included in this mapping before starting this 
uh, integration. Okay, let's go back to Power Platform. And I'm selecting this uh, mapping template. And click OK. And again, I'm selecting organization matching and click, click create. Okay, it didn't take too much time. When we go to projects tab, yep. Uh, these two are the projects which I uh, have created before for this presentation. And this is the last one. Even if you are doing the same mapping, you can create a new project for that. And this doesn't prevent uh, this uh, integration uh, run uh, several times. So uh, I recommend you to check uh, mapping uh, all projects before you create a new one. Uh, when you click on the project name, so get in the list and you'll see all the tasks uh, that already created. And uh, starting with the job functions, departments, job types, jobs, job details, uh, job positions, and then workers, and employment, and assignments. Uh, the uh, crucial thing here is integration is uh, running step by step. So you uh, need to be careful uh, in the order of the mapping. Uh, you have to uh, create mapping. Uh, of the groups or parameters at first, and then you you can uh, uh, add the uh, transaction mappings. Then uh, uh, basically you see the uh, naming uh, the source, which is common uh, common data service job function to uh, find some operations, and uh, if you click on the name, you will get in the uh, mapping, and you'll see the uh, fields which are already added to mapping. Let's uh, go back to project. And uh, uh, here is uh, the navigation. And you can go back to uh, top level by clicking data integration. We have these projects now. And uh, with this uh, three, uh, three dot button menu, you can uh, run several steps. Uh, you can either delete or share or uh, look at the history or run the project from here. Uh, you have same functionalities in the project. Uh, you'll see the uh, in the first tab, you, you'll see the uh, mapping, which is the tasks, and the connections, which, which is used, and uh, scheduling. Uh, this comes uh, manual as default but uh, you can set it up uh, uh, in a recurring state like other uh, applications. And uh, you can see the execution here in the last tab. On top, uh, when I go back to tasks, you can add new tasks here, refresh the tables, this is very important, uh, and look the advanced query and run the project, so run the execution. Uh, uh, with this uh, mapping, uh, this is still a, a primitive screen. Uh, I believe Microsoft will uh, uh, improve the screen. And also we have some uh, problems with the screen. We already submitted uh, as a case, and I believe they'll resolve those too. Uh, when you click on three dot again, you'll see move up and move down. Uh, you can do this ordering with clicking these buttons. This is crucial. And uh, of course, you can delete the tasks. In some cases, uh, it doesn't delete the uh, task, so uh, but still, it can move the tasks. Uh, so uh, if you face uh, that kind of situation, just move it to the down because it stops synchronizing, it stops integration if it has an error. And 
with the mapping, uh, if you want to add new field here, uh, new field mapping, and uh, not new field, new field mapping here, just uh, click on the add mapping on top, click on the link on them, and on the left side, uh, find your field, and right side, uh, find your field from uh, FNO, uh, in this case we don't have, and uh, after uh, selecting, just click on save. In this case, this is incorrect, so I'll delete this one. So just uh, click on the that menu button and delete. Uh, this is uh, the integration that comes out of box. Uh, but in most cases, this is not enough. Uh, the HR people ask more uh, from us and you need to do uh, extension and add other mappings. Uh, I just want to explain some basics of this uh, this environment for those uh, who are working with FNO and who don't have experience with uh, uh, CM site, Power Apps site. Uh, let's go Power Apps. Uh, in the environment, if you go down, you'll have the solutions. And here you'll have the uh, implemented solutions listed. And this common data services default solution is the solution uh, which uh, the uh, extensions will be stored. And uh, default uh, Entity implementations comes with uh, uh, other Dynamics 365 talent uh, solutions. Uh, here, uh, when you create your own customization and create uh, uh, other fields, etc., uh, you can uh, import, export your solutions here. You can uh, do your uh, customization in development environment, export your solution, and import it to uh, test and uh, production environments. And th this is uh, actually similar to models in FNO infrastructure. And uh, here are your entities. Now, uh, this is named tables, but uh, actually those are entities. And we have this uh, uh, list of entities. If you are opening this page for the first time, you'll see just uh, 20 entities and you'll see a link in the bottom that says if you don't see the entities, uh, uh, you can click on the link and expand the list. So uh, don't be surprised if you don't see your uh, entity here. And uh, you can use search here. Uh, let's look into job. And basically, uh, here uh, you can add a new table, but uh, you won't be able to get the data from HR. This is limited by out of box. You cannot add new entities or new fields into existing entities, which you expect to feed from HR. But for your own uh, purposes, you can create fields. And uh, you can do other uh, extensions. Uh, at this point, yep. Uh, before going this point, uh, customizations, I want to uh, explain how do you monitor integrations? Uh, as I said, in the Power Platform, uh, in the data integration project on top level, you can execute the project. The first step you monitor the integration is uh, Dataverse configuration screen in. Dynamics 365 HR. 
So let's go to the configuration page. You will have to check this integrations if it's worked or not. Yeah. If you see a list of records here, it means it is always synchronized to uh, Dataverse. This is the first step. Second step is uh, you can look into the records in the Power Apps by going to Table and going to Data tab here. Uh, if you want to uh, see the field, you can uh, change the view and ch change to all columns and uh, check your fields if it's uh, working or not. And uh, if you see your data here, uh, that means uh, this integration is working properly. And uh, if not, uh, as I said in the beginning, you have to check your batch jobs uh, in the batch jobs and batch job history in the HR, uh, Dynamics 365 HR. Uh, first step will be uh, the execution history. Yep, I can run for this one. This one. Uh, but this is a bit tricky here. Uh, each time you click on run project, it creates a new set of execution history. And it, uh, if you set up scheduling, it creates a new one each time. And if you click on the naming, you'll see how many records upserted. This, uh, this means updated or inserted uh, to the uh, FNO site and how many of them are failed. Uh, you can see the uh, error message by clicking on the one and uh, you can try to resolve. As you see, we have some errors with the uh, position details. And uh, actually, this is very interesting, but this is also the uh, log for uh, data integration. So system checks uh, if integration has been run for this record with these. So if you delete this execution history, it will run this again, and it will create this, uh, integrate this again. So if you need to integrate some records again and again, just come here and delete the execution. Otherwise, uh, uh, it will see those as executed and won't integrate again. So this is a tricky part. And uh, third part is uh, if you, for example, have an error, and uh, uh, this is actually clear here, the uh, bank account ident identification has not been integrated here. So, and this one, so uh, sometimes you have some error messages, they are not clear. So the last controlling step is going to Dynamics 365 FNO. Data management. Uh, when you go to data management uh, workspace, you'll see this data projects. These are the projects which are automatically created in the uh, uh, data management framework. And if you, uh, unfortunately, we are not able to see the uh, entity directly here, so you have to get in and check in one by one. So as you see, we have uh, entity worker entity failed here. So you can go to execution log, and uh, staging data and check the uh, error. Uh, if this entity uh, doesn't have staging data, you can just go to uh, info log and load details and see the error. 
which we have, I believe, another one here. So here you can see the detail in my column. And there is the staging data. So this is a bit, uh, uh, I think, familiar uh, with the people of finance class. Yeah, uh, monitoring can be done like this. And we are running out of time, so uh, let's pass to extensions. And I just want to give some tricky points here. Uh, yeah, we spoke about uh, monitoring. Now, extras. Oh, uh, yeah, this is <laughs> kind of. Uh, uh, when you're working with Dynamics uh, products, <laughs> most probably you uh, you are familiar with some uh, missing parts of uh, these uh, products. Uh, actually, I was expecting to see global address book uh, integration and uh, entities in Dataverse, but there isn't. Uh, there isn't. For this, uh, if you go to Power Apps and list the uh, tables, uh, you won't see the uh, global address book entity. But in human resources, some uh, data is uh, linked to uh, party ID, like work identification cards. And uh, I believe you can find more. Uh, for this one, uh, and uh, again, we are not able to add new entities in this list, and we are not uh, 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 we are unable to uh, add new uh, fields in existing uh, entities. So uh, we had a workaround for this. What we have done is basically in the worker uh, entity. Uh, we created a third party ID field as a calculated field. At this point, you'll learn how to create a uh, calculated field. Just click on new column, it'll bring you to column properties, and you just need to select the uh, calculated field. And if you click on the open calculation, you'll see the calculation here. Uh, this is also not an uh, advanced tool to create a uh, calculated field, like in FNO uh, view calculated fields. So uh, there are some functions you need to be familiar with. I'll open this again. Party ID, calculation. It is a bit slow for the first time. Yep, coming. You have to uh, create a condition which work number contains data, then uh, I basically put in a uh, worker number uh, as a party ID and uh, adding HR dash in front of it. So uh, just keep in your mind that uh, you cannot uh, update the party field in the worker ID. So you should do this at first. You cannot update the party ID. So uh, this is the first step. You should do this uh, as a first step. And we have a, a fixed field uh, uh, as a third party type, as a person. And let's go back to data mapping. And uh, what I've done is basically uh, I've mapped this worker table, worker entity with a global address book. 
I put in uh, basic uh, fields like first name, last name, full name, and party ID and party part type. Uh, this way, I've created a party, the party global address book record. Then I was able to create a, a worker record with party ID. This now accepts a new party ID field as a party ID in worker record. Now, uh, then uh, actually, uh, And th this is the standard uh, worker to worker mapping. I may include these fields in the uh, previous one, but I left it uh, as it is. And when it comes to work worker identification, I use this. So this is the main table. I use this party ID field as a party number on the identification. Now we are able to uh, import uh, identifications to FNO. The only thing is the party ID is not the same with the HR, but it is unique. But uh, be careful on giving this uh, numbering. So th this was a solution for the party ID. And uh, Look, the first resolution for the party ID and second time format resolution. Yeah, uh, we had to uh, map work calendars uh, because that was uh, managing by HR people. So uh, we had to uh, map work calendar times. Okay. So what we are expecting here, if you add a mapping with the uh, integer field to integer field, right? Both of them are integers. And the uh, time field in uh, FNO is integer, and here it is integer. Uh, you expect this work, right? But it doesn't. So what I've done, uh, you uh, have to create uh, a field, string field, and uh, you have to have a, a string time format. Yeah, well, let's look into this calendar time. Sorry. Calendar time interval data. Let's see your columns. Yep, you have to have a, a time field uh, like this. Uh, for this, uh, unfortunately, the uh, calculation uh, type field doesn't work here. So uh, what we are doing here is updating the field with flow and the flow comes into play. For the start time and time. Now, this is actually a very basic flow, which uh, creates variables uh, for the times uh, in the A, A, R, minute, and second format. And this part is important. If you don't put it, there will be a loop and a uh, vicious cycle. So you have to check the condition if it's already updated or not. And now, if not, you have to update the uh, start time and time uh, fields. Then you will be able to map these fields and run the integration successfully. Uh, and date time format grouping resolution, yeah. Uh, we had another issue with uh, CDS records, leave and absence records, uh, uh, importing to payroll system. Uh, but uh, when you use this with uh, CDS, um, unfortunately, you're not able to group with date time fields. So I basically created a date time, uh, date string field in year, month, and a date format. And I've done my uh, groupings on that. 
that's uh, that was another resolution uh, and similarly uh, we have this uh, compensation level resolution which is uh, the compensation level is in, on the top level in HR system in the job level it's not on the transaction level but unfortunately this is in the uh, leave and absence uh, entity in CDS. So yeah, it comes to CDS, the dataverse, but you are not able to send it from CDS to uh, FNO. So what we have done is basically we create the new uh, data flow, uh, which updates, uh, we created a compensation level ID field in uh, a job entity and we updated this field when transaction comes in. Uh, yeah, we are running out of time. Uh, basically, uh, you need to uh, know and uh, get familiar with uh, this uh, Power Apps environment. And uh, there's another uh, tricky part. Uh, if you uh, create mapping and after that, if you add any field in this list, uh, it won't show up in this uh, mapping field list. For this, after you add the field, you just need to refresh the tables. This is the first thing. Uh, and uh, in the table structure, you have relational fields, but uh, you cannot bring the uh, secondary fields from the rela uh, relational table. You can just uh, get the primary field. For example, in the jobs, if you have a job type, you can get the job type name, not the description. So uh, for, uh, for those fields, uh, you need to create a new field and create a calculation uh, calculation uh, on those fields. And after you do this, uh, you need to uh, go to mapping again and refresh tables. Uh, uh, you may stuck uh, if you cannot find the uh, whole fields. Uh, yeah, uh, if you have <laughs> any questions, we are running out of time. I can uh, reply back to you in chat screen, or uh, you can reach me out uh, via LinkedIn or my email uh, or just uh, uh, I am planning to put this uh, information into my blog as well. You can follow my blog. Okay, uh, Ismail sounds great. I like this kind of sessions that we had today around HR and other apps. Uh, the one that you're presenting is really nice because it's a hands-on one, different than mine. Uh, and I really appreciate when we can share and go through the processes. Uh, together. Um, I th also think this is a great idea for a blog. So we'll be um, expecting you to share the step by step in your blog and please feel free to share it uh, with us. So thank you very much for your yeah, time. Thank you thank very, you very much. Thank you for having me. And uh, I especially want to thank all attendees uh, spending uh, the uh, precious time in this chilling Sunday, uh, Sunday uh, evening. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, great. So we have the last session of the day of the event uh, of the summit. So um, I don't know if the speaker is, is there.